What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Tammy Talks. So, we are here today to talk Queen Sugar Season 6, Episode 5. Um, the episode is called Moving So Easy Through the Common Depth. Long title for no reason. If you have not already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the notification bell so that you can get updates and all that type of good stuff. Um, thumbs up the video on your way in or your way out, whichever works best for you. And then leave some comments. Let's have some discussions down below. So let's get to it. So um, episode starts off with Prosper um, and Billy. Billy brought in some muffins for him. And she's talking about coffee. And like all Prosper does is complain about his daughter. Everything that she does is just not good enough. Or he wants everything to stay the same. And I get it. He's an old cantankerous old man. But it's also kind of annoying that it's like he doesn't see what she's doing and it almost seems like he doesn't really appreciate like what she's doing and i know that that's really not the case but it's just coming off like it's getting old at this point prosper so he's trying to talk about he called he tried to reminisce about when she was younger and he said she shoplifted and she was like it wasn't shoplifting and it just kind of seems like he likes to point out the negative about her and it could just be they just have a very contentious relationship and he just doesn't know how to move past it even though he always talks about how he wants to kind of move past it so we see micah coming home to meet charlie for um for lunch and they have this talk about how charlie says she hasn't been sleeping because she wants to remain you know she wants to be in control of everything so Charlie hasn't been sleeping because she's worried about what's going on with the family. She's worried about what's going on with the bones that they found on on the family farm. She's worried about what Black Twitter is saying about her and Davis. There was a headline that said that she's a um, the true you know epitome of a ride or die, and she's stressed about it. And Micah tells her that you know he's been having these like anxiety high driven anxiety moments. And it's because he knows that he wants to be in control of everything. And he has found, he's gotten to a point where he realizes he can't always be in control. He has to learn how to relinquish control and accept that you can control what you can and you cannot control what you can't. So it was a good conversation between the two of them because um, Micah has the same personality as, as Charlie. You know, they're they're high driven, they seem a little high strung. Um, but they, they want to be in control. And when they aren't in control of a situation, they 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 panic almost. It's like they don't know what to do or how to feel or how to move forward. We see Nova is down at the lab trying to get access to the bone results before they become public. And the man is real stank. And we as we know, Nova has rubbed every white person wrong. Um, in that's in that parish or probably in the damn state. So he's like, that's not how it works. You know, why would I give you the access before, you know, it's going to be released? So we see Darla. She goes to talk to Vi about Ralph Angel. She tells Darla that she tells Vi that she has taken the money that they talked about that we saw her and Ralph Angel talk about in the last episode where she has taken the money from her parents. It's rightfully her money. She feels like she's not contributing to the bills and to the household and all of that type of stuff. So she went and got that money and she didn't tell Ralph Angel because he didn't, he doesn't, he didn't want it, right? So Vi is just kind of telling her, look, girl, everybody should have a secret stash from their husband. I got two accounts that Hollywood don't know about. And it's refreshing to see Vi move past that that hurt and, and anger that she had for Darla and to see them like back on good terms. So good to see that. So we see Nova's uh, little neighbor friend who brings her, who I just realized is old boy from Hit the Floor from back in the day. But we see him bringing over some rolling papers for her. I don't trust him. I know I keep saying it, but I don't trust him. I feel like anytime he's, he he's nosy. Like, He's always asking her, hold on, is this cricket? Okay. I feel like he's nosy and he's just kind of always asking her like, well, what are you going to write about next? What is this scoop going to be? What is this detail? It's, it's weird. It's weird. It seems a little bit more than 
oh, I'm just curious about what you're doing, it's coming across as I'm digging for information. So we see that, um, but no love peeps game and she doesn't get, let him know what she's writing about or what the next topic is or anything like that. She kind of keeps that under tuck and tells him that he can just, you know, see it in her next issue of True Papers. So we have Rough Angel who meets up with his friend who, um, the guy from, the guy we met before that was going to go hit Landry Industries. And he's telling Rough Angel, you need some money here. How much you need? He's pulling out the paper. And then he just gives him the why. And Rough Angel is like, why are you doing this? You know, and his friend tells him, you looked out for me when I, you know, was in a bind before. This is me paying you back. And then he gives this, like, hood homie tale story about how the hood got to stick together. You one of the last and the realest niggas out here. And it's like, you're, he's pumping all this into Rough Angel's head. Um, to basically geek him up so that he'll go and hit this lick with him. So we see Charlie and Nova. Um, Charlie comes over to Nova's house. She has a couple of bottles of wine. They will twist off. We know damn well Charlie ain't drinking no damn twist off, twist cap wine. But they're um Charlie's baking, and then they're just kind of talking about what's going on with them. They have a moment where they discuss whether or not they really think the bones that were on the property. Um, or because their father killed someone. So it's a good moment between the two of them because they, we don't get a lot of moments where they're on a, a, on a good court. You know what I mean? We've seen them kind of be at each other's throats so often that it's refreshing to see them like in a good place. So then we have Vi who is realizing that Hollywood might want kids. Um, Paula Parker and her son come over they're having dinner and hollywood is like he he seems more alive whenever that little boy is around and he's teaching him basketball and he takes some fishing and they have these moments together where vi just kind of looks and you can see in her that she knows that hollywood probably has always wanted kids hollywood wants kids right now and it's something that she um she knows that she can't give him. And I think there's a bit of worry to her about what's going to happen, you know, if I really and truly can't give this man kids. Well, she knows that she can't, but she's wondering if their marriage is going to survive her not being able to give him kids. So, uh, Ralph Angel has the audacity to sit in that building and pray before going in and robbing it. So, he's saying, you know, talking to God, God. I I am um, I don't talk to you that often, but I need you to you know to cover me, make sure I don't get caught with what I'm about to do. I'm gonna do it this one time. Like I know it's wrong, but it's for my family, it's for a good cause, and it's just kind of like if you got to pray before doing something like that, then that just means you don't need to be doing it. Point blank. That means that you know that you shouldn't be doing it. So why even you know what I mean? Why put yourself through that? So, Ralph Angel is supposed to just be the driver, and he ends up having to help actually load the truck. And the man tells him, like, look, if you don't want to do it, give back the money, and then we're fine. Ralph Angel probably don't spend that money already, and that man knew damn well Ralph Angel did not have the money. So, Ralph Angel gets out, comes and helps him, and Ralph Angel's paranoid. He keeps thinking that he's hearing stuff, and he's looking around, and he's like, did you hear that? Y'all hear that? And the man is like, you just paranoid. Ain't nobody out here but us. And then as we see Rock Angel driving home, we see some, um, we see a cop in a cop behind him that is has the lights on and the sign was going. And Rock Angel thinks he's getting pulled over, so he pulls over, but the cop is actually driving past him to something else. So you, you escaped it once, my boy. Let that be it. So Charlie has a talk with Aunt Vi and she's talking about social media and how she's being perceived on Black Twitter. And they have a, a good conversation to where Aunt Vi just kind of tells her or reminds her, Charlie, you invited people into your household. You know what I mean? You posted the pictures of Davis. You went on Gail King show. You talked about your relationship. Like, why do you care with people who you don't know and that don't know you? Why do you care what they think about you and 
what they are saying about you on, on Twitter, you know, keep your relationship to yourself. And she tells her, like, if I ever asked you about Hollywood, no, because he's my man. This is my relationship. And what other people think about what we got going just doesn't matter. So, I mean, you know, food for thought from Aunt Vi. Uh, we see a scene with Nova and Billy. They were sitting around and Nova is having Billy read an article that she wrote. And Billy is like, you know, I knew you were talented for Nova, but damn, you know, so... They have this moment where they apologize to each other. And Billy finally apologizes for outing Nova to, to her father because she was she was mad at the relationship with her dad. And they talk about how they miss each other as a best friend. They compared all their future best friends to to each other and it never worked out. So they're back on one accord, which is good to see because um, Billy, don't don't come and be the bad news bears all the time. So we find out that the remains from the um, the remains from the land were a, a hundred and fifty year old bones. So it couldn't have possibly been from anybody that Ernest killed. But then Ralph Angel brings up the point of I wonder whose bones it is. So the family name has been cleared. Um, for now, Ernest's name has been cleared. He didn't kill anybody. Michael Fran like him, um, as I've mentioned before. So, earlier in the episode, we see Micah's friend come in the room asking Micah, when has he seen his meal card? Micah just was like, you know, go on, just use mine. Um, and they have a moment where Micah's friend is looking at his computer and it's like, I didn't know you were that good with photography. And Micah offers to take some, or actually his friend asks Micah to take some pictures of him for like his social media profiles. Girl, he just wanted Micah to take pictures of him. So later this episode, we see Micah coming back to his dorm. He asks his friend, you know, how did your test go? His friend is like, it went. <laughs> it went. Um, and then he just tells him that he's been kind of stressed. He didn't study like he should have. And Michael told him, well, Micah told him, well, I'm here for you the same way that you were here for me. And they hug. As they're hugging, um, two guys that live in the dorm, looks like next door or just in that dorm area, are kind of looking. And Micah's friend peeks game and kind of gives them a look. And I don't know if that look was more of, nah, this ain't that. Or a look of, yeah, this is... This is my guy. So it was it was weird. It, it, I'm pretty sure it's going to lead to some gay rumors about Micah swirling. So interested to see how that's going to pan out. But there's a reason that they zoomed in on that guy's face. There was a reason. So then we see um, Ross Angel and he's talking to Darla about he planned a baby moon for them to go up to um, make a little bed and breakfast. He said he paid for it, fireplace in the room, all this type of stuff. Darla said, absolutely not, it's expensive. Ralph Angel said, no, it's cool. I already paid for it. You know, we deserve this. Um, told her that he worked some overtime. He worked a double shift the night before, the month so he got double pay, and he's going to do it again next week. So now we see that Ralph Angel is going back down the path of um, I don't want to say crime, but he's going back down the path of crime because he's desperate to provide for his family. And he got that quick, fast money. And when people start getting quick, fast money like that, they get addicted to it. And they kind of like disregard all the consequence. Rough Angel has too much to lose now. You're married. You have this farm. You have a baby on the way. Like he has too much to lose. But this is the, this is the route Rough Angel is going to take. So then they, uh, Nola's neighbor friend pops up again and he thought she wanted some more rolling papers, but she wanted, I forgot what she had, I think she, oh, she wanted to know if he could put her in touch with somebody who could run the bones because now she's curious about whose bones those were on their farm. Um, or again, and I'm sure Nola's trying, Nola's trying to figure like this, like an ancestor of theirs or something. And the neighbor friend is like, sure, I can do it at the university. Don't trust him, y'all. So he invites Nova to go on a run with him. She says, yeah, she just has to go change. She leaves all her shit in front of him. 
all her stuff in front of him, the laptop, her iPad, all the stuff that she's working on out and about in front of him, I would have told him, yeah, I'll meet you outside or, you know, give me 15 minutes, I'll come get you when I'm ready. But don't leave that man just in your living room with all your stuff out. You know what I mean? So she does that. Then we see next episode on the preview, her ass is about to get popped by the feds. So it's kind of like, did that man, is he a whistleblower? I really feel like he's an undercover detective or cop that is really out to try to trap her. Um, and then at the end, we see Prasper finally thanking his daughter for everything that she's been doing for him, letting her know that, you know, he appreciates all the help. And because, you know, he went off for her about that damn coffee pot earlier and that he appreciates her and he finally apologizes for his wrongs in the past. If he made her feel a certain way, if he didn't know, if he didn't give her the love that, you know, she needed. And in turn, she says that she is sorry that she made herself unworthy of his love. And he was like, no, it was totally, totally me. So I'm hoping that they come to a better understanding. Prosper ain't got that many more years left. So, you know, go on and wreck it out. I know you love the border loans and buy and everything, but go ahead and reconcile with your daughter and get that together. So that was it. If you are still here, thanks for watching the entire video. Go ahead and subscribe, thumbs up, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.